Welcome to the Swarm Sync tutorial. Today, we'll explore how this innovative plugin seamlessly integrates Grasshopper with GitHub, enhancing your design workflow through efficient version control and collaborative features. Whether you're starting a new project or jumping back into an ongoing one, Swarm Sync is here to streamline the process. Before diving into repository management, let's set up your Swarm Sync environment. Start by dragging the Swarm Sync component onto your Grasshopper Canvas. Next, click on the GitHub icon. If this is your first time using Swarm Sync, you'll need to authenticate your GitHub account. Click Request Token to be redirected to GitHub where you can copy your authorization key. Once you have your authorization key, return to Grasshopper and enter it into the Swarm Sync dialog box. After submitting the key, Wait a moment for the authorization process to complete. This secure connection ensures that your sessions are safe and your projects are synced accurately. After successful authentication, you'll be prompted to verify and complete your account details. First, check that your account name and your name are correct. Then, you'll need to enter your email address. This step is crucial as it helps build your signature for commits and other actions within GitHub. Your signature is used to identify you as the author of commits and other changes. It's important to provide accurate information here, as it appears in the project's history logs and is visible to all collaborators. This transparency helps maintain the integrity of your collaborative projects and ensures that contributions are correctly attributed to you. Now that your account is set up, you have two options to continue, create, or clone a repository. If you want to start a brand new project, you can create a repository. This will set up a new space on GitHub where your project will live. On the other hand, if you want to work on an existing project that's already on GitHub, you can clone it. Cloning downloads the project to your local machine so you can work on it right away in Grasshopper. Since you already have an open Grasshopper file with some components, I suggest clicking on Create to start a new repository. This way, you can immediately begin managing your current work under version control. Just give your new repository a name, decide if it's public or private, and then select a local path. Remember, the folder you choose for your local path must be empty to prevent any conflicts. Once set, you're ready to connect your Grasshopper design directly to GitHub, syncing your project with ease. As soon as you create your new repository, Swarm Sync will begin analyzing the contents of your Open Grasshopper file. This initial analysis is crucial as it prepares your file for version control integration. You'll notice that all components in your Grasshopper canvas are highlighted with a green plus sign. This indicates that these components are new and have not yet been tracked in your repository. To initialize your project, simply click on Select All Components. This action selects every component for the initial commit. Next, enter a commit message in the message box. Something straightforward like init works perfectly as it denotes the initialization of your project in the repository. Then, click on commit to finalize this initial setup. Once the commit is successful, you will see the list of records in the Swarm Sync window clear out, and the highlights on the Grasshopper components will also be cleared. Now that you've committed your initial changes, the next step is to share these updates with your GitHub repository. To do this, simply click the push button in the Swarm Sync panel. Once you click, Swarm Sync will start uploading your commits to the remote repository. This might take a few moments, depending on your internet connection and the size of the changes. Wait until you see a prompt confirming that the push was successful. This notification ensures that your changes are now safely stored and visible in your GitHub repository making them accessible for collaboration or further individual development. With your initial commits successfully pushed to GitHub, you can now close the Swarm Sync dialog and continue working on your Grasshopper file. While it's possible to work on your canvas while the Swarm Sync window is open, we recommend closing the dialog to ensure a smoother workflow and better performance. When you've made further modifications to your file and are ready to sync these changes with your repository, simply reopen the Swarm Sync component to view the Swarm Sync window again. This time, you'll notice a list of changes, whether modifications, additions, or deletions, reflected both in the Grasshopper Canvas and the Swarm Sync window. 
To manage these changes, you have options. You can select all changes and commit them at once for simplicity, or you can choose to commit changes in batches. Committing in batches allows you to assign different commit messages to various changes, creating a clearer and more detailed history of your project's development. This flexibility in handling commits can be incredibly valuable for maintaining a well-organized repository that accurately reflects the progression and iterations of your design project. This narration explains the workflow post-initial setup, emphasizing best practices for using SwarmSync effectively and managing changes efficiently within the Grasshopper environment. It ensures users understand the importance of structured commits and provides guidance on how to maintain a clean version control history. To begin working with an existing project from GitHub using SwarmSync, start by opening a new, empty Grasshopper file. This ensures there's no existing data that could interfere with the repository you're about to clone. First, add a SwarmSync component to your canvas, which is essential for initiating the cloning process. Next, you'll need to specify two important paths, the remote path and the local path. Enter the remote path to the repository you wish to clone, make sure it's a repository to which you have access. For the local path, select an empty directory on your computer where the project files will be stored. It's crucial that this directory is empty to avoid any conflicts or errors during the cloning process. Once you've set these paths, click the Clone option in the SwarmSync panel. After a few moments, depending on the size of the repository and your internet connection, you will see the Grasshopper Canvas begin to populate with components. These components represent the latest state of the repository, bringing the project's most recent developments directly into your workspace. After the cloning is complete, don't forget to save your Grasshopper file. This step is important as it preserves the newly cloned project on your local machine for further development or analysis. By saving the file, you ensure that all your work remains intact and readily accessible for your next session.